Well, greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, bringing you another edition of Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem uh, and the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama, deep in the uh, deep in the bowels of Omaha, Nebraska. And again, I, I do apologize. It is just me, uh, Brother James, and the girls are out doing their thing. Brother Jack thought he'd hit the camera and get get another episode into the can for you. Uh, just going to give you a few little heads up here. We're going to be appearing at the Zombie Walk in Benson on Saturday the 8th of October. And it goes from like 1 to uh, 6 p.m. The actual walk is going to start at 5 p.m. Uh, and after that they have the, uh, the Zombie Prom and some really great bands playing. You're going to want to come down and see that. And it's, for the most part, it is all free. Uh, there's a small, I mean, if you want to participate in the, uh, like in the zombie prom, there's a small donation of, I believe, like $10. And all of the, uh, all a good part of the proceeds will go to the Sienna Francis house. Um, so it's a great charity, great cause. Come on down, hang out with me, and uh, we're going to have some new girls appearing on the show at the zombie walk. Uh, so you're not going to want to miss that. You're not going to want to see some new, there's going to be some new faces. And hopefully some, uh, you know, some old favorites as well. I'm going to be there. I'm trying to get uh, Tord and a few others to uh, to show up here, but I'm working on that. Anyway, you know, heard a little, well, never mind what I heard. I'm going to keep quiet on that right now. But believe me, you'll get a good laugh out of it when I finally do tell you. Anyway, tonight's movie is the 1983 uh Classic, stinker, sci-fi, you know, sci superhero slash James Bond movie, Megaforce, starring Barry Bostwick, Persis Kambata, Edward Mulhair, Michael Beck, Henry Silva, uh, and, and a cast of, of quite a few others. Uh, this movie was, uh, manufact was uh, produced in 1983 and released the same year. Basically, it deals with a rapid deployment, uh, uh, anti-terrorism special forces squad called Megaforce. And this organization is so super secret that it's funded by every, every um, d democratic government on the planet, but nobody, everybody wants to completely disavow it. You know, kind of the SEAL Team 6, only there's no Bin Laden involved. Well, if you want to count Henry Silva, I guess you could say that. But anyway, the uh, story deals with the this uh, unit Megaforce, uh, how they are sent to a uh, uh, to a basically here to a country called Gamibia, which we really don't know if it's in Africa, if it's in South America. There's a lot of sand around, so I'm putting my money on uh, Africa or the Middle East, you know. And uh, they've hired a mercenary general named Duke Guerrero, played by Henry Silva to go in there and uh, basically stir up a lot of trouble on the border as an excuse for them sending in the regular army to invade this other democratic nation, uh, the Republic of Sardoun, uh, and that's where Persis Kambata's character comes in. You know, it's basically your, your basic Saturday morning shoot 'em up you've got the hero, the good-looking hero, you know, with the perfect hair, and yeah, the California Beach Boy type. We all know uh, we all know what we're talking about. You've got the uh, the villain, you know, in in this case, you know, Henry Silva could pass for either an Arab or Hispanic. I know his uh, nationality is Hispanic. Uh, one Actually, a little trivia about Henry Silva. The man has, that, that uh, man, uh, been in the business since the early 1950s, started out as a bit player with one of the major studios, worked his way up to a leading man, didn't really quite make the cut as a leading man, but they found he made a great heavy. He made a great villain. If you were the evil dictator, uh, the uh, you know the power mad general, um, what have you? I mean, the the crazed drug dealer or the drug cartel member. Odds are you were played by Henry Silva during the uh, like late seventies through the eighties and into the nineties. Uh, one of his best known films was Sharky's Machine, starring Burt Reynolds and Brian Keith, and him. 
Uh, he played uh, a drug addicted hitman who that seemed like nobody could stop. I mean, this guy took enough firepower or took enough lead in that movie to sink a battleship. Uh, great performance. Henry Silva, one of the best heavies, bad guys that ever came out of Hollywood. I think he has passed away. I'll have to double check that on IMDb when I get a chance. Um, if so, I mean, you know, RIP, sir, great job, love your work, you know, um, great, great actor. I mean, can't really say enough good things about the man. So on that note, we're going to get on here with Megaforce, starring Barry Bostwick and Persis Kambata, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Enjoy! Despite official denials by leaders of the free world, sources now confirm the existence of Megaforce, a phantom army of super-elite fighting men whose weapons are the most powerful science can devise. Their mission, to preserve freedom and justice, battling the forces of tyranny and evil in every corner of the globe. Y'all want to meet that man? Yup. Commander Hunter, I presume. Now call me Hunter. Duke. Oh, listen, I just wanted to say goodbye and remind you that the good guys always win, even in the 80s. See you, Duke.
back faithful followers what do you think of megaforce so far isn't this movie horrible i mean my god i'd walk out on this film on an airplane um i mean yeah we all love it it brings back some great memories brother jack as a kid you know your saturday you had your saturday morning you got up you got your big bowl of cereal and you parked your narrow little butt in front of the tv for a couple hours you know, brings back a lot of really great memories from the 80s, which was a simpler time. Um, for Brother Jack, you know, it was just getting into, um, just getting out of uh, junior high and getting into high school. So we all know what that was like, you know, puberty, acne, you know, the, you know, it's like, uh, you know, your, your acne never seemed to clear up and, well, never mind about what wouldn't, or would or wouldn't go down, you know, it's like, <clears throat> yeah, but it's some great memories, great times. You know, my favorite memory is any, just about any Saturday, you had your butt in front of the TV, you had your bowl of cereal, or in Brother Jack's case, it was a peanut butter and waffle sandwich, you know, the uh, frozen Eggo waffles, little peanut butter, little strawberry jam, just, that was some good eating, those were some good breakfasts. Um, and the biggest worry you had was what the hell you was you going to do with the Saturday that was stretching out in front of you because usually the cartoons ran from about 7 to 10 a.m., 11 a.m., depending. Uh, and then it was the sports, you, you got into your sports stuff. Um, and the biggest worry you had is, well, who, which one of your friends was you going to go pay a visit to first? Or, you know, was you going to take the bus to the mall and hang out at the mall? Or, you know, you didn't really have any other cares or worries than that? Not like now. I mean, yeah, it's like sometimes Brother Jack thinks he's got too much to worry about. But, you know, I guess that's what's, you know, growing old is, you can't avoid it, but growing up is optional. And I'm going kicking, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm going kicking and screaming all the way. Yeah, you know, somebody asked me how my childhood was, I'm going to say, so far, so good. But anyway, a little trivia about Megaforce for y'all. Uh, there was no costume designer in this movie. The uh, costumes uh, that you saw, the um, Megaforce people wearing, you know, the, the gold lame jumpsuits or the span gold spandex jumpsuits and the boots, those were all designed by the toy manufacturer Mattel. And a little, uh, little bit of trivia here that you might not know about unless you're a really hardcore console gamer. The Atari 2600 actually came out with a game called Megaforce that was based on the movie in like 1984. Um, I don't know if any copies still exist. If anybody's got one, you know, drop Brother Jack a line and, you know, let him know what you think of it. But um, the film would took 20 million to make, which in 1983 was a pretty fair chunk of change. But it only made a little over five at the box office, and that's both domestic and foreign releases. So the movie was judged to be an abject failure by uh, the studio. Uh, actually, it was a studio called Golden Harvest, and I don't think they exist anymore. 
Uh, but that movie was, there was a, uh, a package of like four pictures that was hopefully going to propel the film into the epic adventure films like westerns. It was actually Megaforce, um, it was Blade Runner, it was High Road to China, and there was one other film whose name escaped me. But those four films were supposed to like kind of revive the western genre and the adventure genre that was popular in like the uh, the late 50s and the early 60s. Movies like Ben Hur, um, Spartacus, and that sort of thing. That was Golden Harvest's intention, but it never really worked out. And the only real hit that they had out of that the, those four was Blade Runner with Harrison Ford, and that really didn't catch on until you know, like maybe, uh, like maybe ten years after Blade Runner was released, which was like 1984, and then it got more of a cult following than anything else. But now, Blade Runner is regarded as a science fiction classic, and it was one of the films that launched Harrison Ford's career, and we all know how that turned out, you know. So. This is where he got his roots from. I mean, if anything, he should thank Golden Harvest. But the uh, the Megaforce movie, another little bit of trivia here. Uh, the designs for a lot of the motorcycles, uh, those were designed by Hal Needham, the producer, uh, one of the, and the stunt coordinator, and several others. And uh, these movie or these vehicles were so well designed and actually so well thought out. They used, um, they had a group of military advisors as part of the technical team, and these vehicles that they had come, uh, come up with were actually so well thought out and so well done and so well executed, everything worked. Their, uh, pro their vehicle person, uh, he took him over a year to build the, like, 200-some bikes that were used in the film, uh, and well, by vehicle bikes I mean vehicles like dune buggies, motorbikes, and other vehicles. It was about 200 total, and it took him over a year of almost non-stop work, him and a crew of like 50 people, to build these vehicles and deliver them on time, and everything worked, which is a big. There was no, there were no errors. Nothing was. Uh, nothing was non-functional. Everything they promised, they delivered on. And these were vehicles were so well done and so well advanced, the military actually asked for the plans. And some of those vehicles are incorporated into the equipment uh, inventories of outfits like SEAL Team 6, uh, Navy SEALs, uh, the Rangers and the Airborne Divisions, um, and, Marine Rec and Marine Recon. So, so you know... So, so the uh, anti-terrorism efforts that are going on today actually owes a lot to Megaforce in 1982. Go figure. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get back to the movie Megaforce, starring uh, Barry Boswick, Persis Kambata, Edward Mulhair, Michael Beck, and... Henry Silva here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shaka Rama. Enjoy.
Hi, Duke. Oh, listen, I just wanted to say goodbye and remind you that the good guys always win, even in the 80s. Well, greetings, faithful followers. Welcome back. What do you think of Megaforce? I mean, isn't this movie just, I mean, we need some wine with all this cheese. I'll tell you this much. But hey, it was worth the three. I remember when I first saw it, I paid three fifty for a Saturday afternoon. You know, it uh, it actually premiered in August of 1983, and I think it was September, like September 15th or thereabouts, that I saw it. You know, and it was worth. Uh, I saw it at the old Midlands Four Theater um, at uh, at the uh, Midlands Mall in downtown Council Bluffs. So. You know, it was worth the three fifty you paid to get in to see the thing, um, which was great. I remember I, re I uh, after it had come out, I'd bought a copy on Laserdisc, and I wished the hell I'd kept it, you know, but those things get lost, they get damaged, so on and so forth. But, um, you know, great movie. Eh, you know, it, it was kind of a stinker, but it brings back a lot of really great memories, and this definitely falls under the category of, a movie that's so bad, it's good. So, eh, it was worth what you paid to get in to see it. And it was worth what you bought it for at the video store or what you rented it from Blockbuster or Applause Video. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, I hope you've enjoyed Megaforce starring Barry Bostwick and Persis Kambata. Um, little side note, Michael Beck actually, this movie helped launch Michael Beck's career. The only other thing he'd done of note prior to Megaforce was The Warriors, which, again, is a great cult movie, cult classic movie. Um, he went on after Megaforce to play a, uh, to do a uh, made-for-TV horror movie called Chiller, where he plays a man who is brought back from a cryogenic freeze and apparently comes back without a soul or being some type of demonic monster. Um, we'll, we'll look into that and we'll get back to you on that. But... Again, it's Megaforce. Yeah. I'm Brother Jack Angry, asking you all to let's keep America on top. Watch horror hosts, everyone. Good night and unpleasant dreams. <laughs>